Hello, my name is Michael Suliard, and today we're going over the Smart PTT Plus release for version 9.1. For those of you who aren't familiar with Smart PTT already, I'm going to take a brief moment to go over the uh, standard and optional features of Smart PTT Plus. Uh, the standard features include uh, all of your voice dispatching functions, which include selective call or private call, group call, all call, radio kill, uh, remote monitor, and so forth. Uh, we also support text messaging as a standard function, uh, which enables the dispatcher to transmit and receive uh, text messages between an individual radio subscriber or a group of subscribers. We uh, have event logging, which is going to record uh, each data event that occurs, whether it's a text message, a um, emergency event, uh, status changes on telemetry, uh, which is one of the following functions that we support telemetry exchange regarding the rear accessory connector on the Moto Turbo Mobile. Uh, fleet management is going to let you manage um, individual subscribers, a group of subscribers, or all subscribers to update functionalities for them. Uh, loan worker is also a standard function. So let's say you have a um, worker who's working alone in a hazardous work area. We can automatically turn on the alone worker functionality for that subscriber. So while they're working in that hazardous work area, it's uh, like they're being watched uh, by the dispatcher automatically so that if anything happens, they don't move or PTT their radio for a period of time. We can notify the dispatcher that there may be uh, an incident occurring. And we also do job ticketing standard, which is going to give you work order management. This way you can make sure that nothing slips between the cracks and it helps ensure uh, customer satisfaction um, and hospitality, or it can help make sure that equipment downtime is less in like a manufacturing environment. Now some of the optional features of Smart PTT Plus are going to include your GPS tracking, uh, web data client. The web data client is going to let you do uh, real-time GPS tracking and text message exchange through a PC's web browser rather than having a dedicated dispatch client. The monitoring aspect is going to give you uh, like all of your RDAC functionalities uh, plus a talk-in RF coverage heat map. Uh, if an incident occurs with one of your repeaters, it can uh, send an email off uh, to notify somebody that uh, there's an issue with the radio system so that it's going to help reduce your downtime. Voice recording is going to give you a, a voice logging on the radio server and instant recall on the dispatch client. Motorola's come out with a new indoor tracking feature with the new E-Series Moto Turbo radios, and we work with that functionality so that you can track uh, where your employees are for accountability or worker safety purposes uh, inside of a building. Your radio network bridging is going to uh, enable you to uh, bridge systems together. So if you have a customer uh, migrating from LTR to Capacity Plus, we can bridge those systems together during the migration period. Or perhaps uh, you have multiple IP Site Connect systems that you want to bridge into one larger IP Site Connect system. This will do that for you. With Smart PTT Plus, we can do direct IP connectivity for both uh, voice and data using the NI Data and the NI Voice protocols. Now the new E-Series radios from, Moto Turb from Motorola have uh, a built-in man down license that you can get. Um, it's an option, but for the older radios, uh, the uh, first generation and the second generation radios, we offer man down firmware for the generic option board or GOB inside the radio. And finally, we do support telephone interconnect uh, functionality so that radio subscribers can make and receive telephone calls. 
Now, in SmartPTT uh, release 9.1, we've um, added a lot more functionality to Capacity Max. We released uh, Capacity Max in version 9.0, but um, Motorola's come out with a lot of enhancements to it, and we've added additional support. Now, one thing I want to make clear is version 9.1 of Smart PTT must use Capacity Max uh, firmware R2.7 or higher. If you're using R2.6, you must use Smart PTT plus release 9.0. So some of the enhancements include we've increased the number of sites that we can support up to 250. We also support up to 15 voice gateways and one data gateway, both uh, primary and secondary. So this is uh, now we're going to support your much larger uh, Moto Turbo Capacity Max systems. <clears throat> We also support uh, redundancy for the Capacity Max system server. So uh, the CMSS uh, can have a redundant uh, CMSS, and we can support operation with both of those. We also support um, redundancy with the MNIST data gateway. So this way, if uh, the primary goes down, the secondary or redundant can pick up and you're not going to lose any of your important data. The, we have a system-wide all-call feature now, so this can help save time in case of an emergency. Rather than trying to send a message to multiple uh, talk groups, you could do the system-wide all-call. Now, this is a new but very powerful feature that Motorola has come up with. Um, in the past, uh, there's always been a radio kill functionality, uh, which enables the dispatcher to kill a radio. Well, with Capacity Max, they've come up with wireline console radio kill. This completely kills the radio. The only way to revive the radio is to send it to a Motorola service center for them to re-enable it. Uh, so you have to be very careful in letting your customers use this functionality. Uh, because it is so powerful, we've limited access to it by use of a user and password. Now, the standard uh, radio kill functionality uh, has been added in the um, wireless mode using control stations for Capacity Max. Now, Motorola has also come out with a new topology. It's called Extended Range Direct Mode. Uh, my understanding of this is it's essentially a store and forward device, um, a store and forward repeater. So if you need to extend range out into a dead spot on a simplex channel, uh, this new topology is going to essentially record that audio and then retransmit it out into that dead spot. So um, some limitations on this is it must, it only works with the SLR 5000 and the Paradise and Paradise Lite radios. Uh, this does not support data revert or phone calls. Uh, for Smart PTT to work with this, you must have an IP site connect connectivity license. Now, some of the uh, new features or updates we've done to Smart PTT 9.1 include informing the dispatcher of network problems. One of the common issues <clears throat> is uh, the customer may lose connectivity somewhere in the system, and they think that the application is uh, having issues. So with these new system messages, it can notify the dispatcher that there's a connectivity issue somewhere within the network, whether it be between um, the dispatcher and the radio server or between the radio server and the radio system. And an uh, example here, they show that the uh, redundant trunking controller is disconnected and then that it reconnects later. So this can help 
uh, dealers be one more clear on where issues are occurring, but it can also um, help them reduce technical time because one, it's telling them where it's at, but it will also let you know if it's uh, fixed the problem on its own. We've added additional um, voice recording file formats. Uh, in the past, we've always supported MP3 formats, but now with uh, 9.1, we support OGG and WAV files. OGG is about the same size as an MP3 file, but better quality. The WAV file is going to give you a higher quality recording, but you're going to be making a trade-off uh, for disk space. Now, <clears throat> we have this indoor location beacon list in the call window. So when we first released the indoor tracking feature with uh, Smart PTT 9.0 um, at CPE uh, this year, we were surprised by the number of requests of people that did not want to see the location indoors on a map. This was usually due to uh, union restrictions not being, uh, with employees not being tracked. But the union still required the uh, companies to be able to identify their location. So in response to all of these requests, we've created a list of beacons in the call window that the unit is in range of. So this still helps you quickly identify where the subscriber location is in the case of an emergency. Now, we have this new subscribers movement report. This is kind of like a start-stop report. And what this helps with is fleet efficiency. Um, you know, a lot of fleets, what they do is they have a manager do a ride-along with a driver, or they may shadow that driver to see, you know, where they stop, how long they stop there for. And so the manager will spend the morning or all day just monitoring a driver like this, and it takes up a lot of time. It's highly inefficient. So with the subscriber movement report, we can note when they start moving, when they stop moving, uh, where they stop at, how long they're there for, uh, so that you can track their movements throughout the, uh, throughout the day. Now the location will show you the address based upon something like Google Maps or the coordinates, but you can also create points of interest. So if I wanted to show Motorola Schaumburg as a point of interest instead of as a street address, I could do that. This way when I'm looking at the locations, it's more easily understandable as to why did that um, driver stop at that location. So now we can sync the settings between the main and redundant radio servers. Uh, in the past, you would have to configure both uh, the primary and the redundant separately. With version 9.1, we automate this for you. So it's going to help uh, simplify the configuration process and re reduce any chances of errors uh, with the separate configurations. We have added some additional processing for when you are using control stations. Um, for example, if you were to be bridging an LTR system into an LCP system, uh, you might find that there might be bleed through of like trunking tones or some other tones into the audio from the control station. Well, that uh, bleed through can affect the audio quality and the bridging process. So we've created a program to um, let you create different filters to better control the audio quality. So we've added high pass and low pass filters, high shelf and low shelf, band pass uh, filters, gain and notch filters. 
So some of our uh, recommended next steps for you is uh, now that SmartPTT 9.1 is being released, we recommend that you download SmartPTT 9.1 uh, from the MOL and install it, in it as a demo in your office uh, so that you can demonstrate this to, new, to your customers. Uh, offer the Smart PTT 9.1 to your uh, new customers in vertical markets, or if you have customers already using Smart PTT but they're on an older version, is you can sell the annual updates so they can get access to the new features in Smart PTT 9.1. So I want to thank you for your time today. Uh, again, my name is Michael Souliard. <clears throat> if you're located in any of the blue states here on the map, uh, you would work directly with me. Uh, my phone number is 786-923-1433. Seven, <clears throat> seven or you can contact me also at michael at smartptt.com. Uh, for sales in the green states, you would work with Terry Lang, and Terry can be contacted at 786-923-1404 or at terry at smartptt.com. And I'd also like to welcome Ray Irigoyen to the team. Uh, he just started, and he's taking over sales in Canada and the central U.S. Uh, he's represented by the uh, orange states, and Ray can be contacted at 786-923-1407 or at ray at smartptt.com. So again, thank you for your time and please feel free to contact us with any questions that you might have.